Welcome to Brickology, episode 20. Uh, I'm not going to do that the rest of the time. I'm, I apologize, but I just had to open this episode of Brickology like that. And I think if I was more musically inclined, I could have written an entire jingle for this episode. But alas, I am not. But good morning, good afternoon, good evening. There's my normal intro. What's up, y'all? My name is Lee Parr. You might know me as Lego Lee or Lego Lee 329 And you might know me from Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, you name it. I I am all over the internet, and this is the Brickology Podcast. How are you doing today? I sincerely hope you are doing well. And during that little that little musical intro, I got all the sorts, and I completely messed up my normal flow of things. So we were off to a very weird start to this week's episode of Brickology. But welcome back to Brickology. Like I already said, this is episode 20. We are now 20 episodes deep into Brickology. That is super exciting. It doesn't seem that long ago when we just had 10 episodes or five i'm celebrating each and every milestone i hit and 20 is a big one that is a fairly decent sized catalog of podcast episodes and i'm very very proud of that but before we get started with today's episode i do need to address a couple of things and like the episode i did two weeks ago emphasis on two weeks i need to address the big elephant in the room and that is of course yep I missed last week's episode of Brickology, and I've actually missed two of the past three weeks in total after going like three and a half straight months of getting an episode out each week. I sincerely apologize for that. Now, I think I have pretty good excuses. I was literally moving out of my apartment, which was requiring a lot of heavy lifting, and I was just very busy. didn't have time to record the episode. And then for the holiday weekend, for the July weekend here in America, I went on vacation to the mountains with my folks. So I think I have decent excuses as to why I didn't make an episode of Brickology last week, but at the same time, I just feel bad because I've been doing so well at getting weekly episodes out, and I've got a lot of messages and questions like, where is Brickology this week? And I just definitely felt bad that I did not have an episode of Brickology for you guys last week. However, that should be it for the foreseeable future. And I swear this time, I'm probably not really going anywhere for a bit here. For the next few weeks and hopefully months, there should be a weekly episode of Brickology like we were doing in the heart of quarantine. I swear, guys, there will be weekly episodes of Brickology starting now. Now, a couple of announcements for the future of this podcast. This is the last licensed theme episode of Brickology for season two, which means we're almost done with season two. This is the ninth episode of season two. Next week's episode will be kind of like the 10th episode of the season finale season one. I did a fan vote and I will be doing that again for the season finale for season two. So if you follow me on Instagram, if you don't, it's legolee329 on Instagram. I'm going to talk more about my social medias here in just a second, but find me on Instagram. At some point in the next week, I'll be throwing up a sticker to ask what theme you guys would like to see or hear about on the finale of Brickology. That, of course, will be an unlicensed theme, but this is the last licensed theme episode of season two. So that episode will be next week. In two weeks, there will be a Q&A. I decided I think it's a pretty good idea to end every season of Brickology with a questions and answers episode. That's a good way to kind of end a season and segue into the new season. So in three weeks, Brickology season three will begin with another episode about Lego Star Wars. So get excited for that. Lots of big things to come for the future of Brickology. And like I said, I'm going to do a little shameless plug for my social medias. I always say at the beginning that you can find me on all these platforms online, and then I reiterate that at the very end of the podcast. But if I'm being real, people usually tune out at the end of the podcast, like after I say everything important and I'm wrapping things up. I'm guessing people probably turn it off or stop listening. And if you're getting it that far into this podcast anyways, one, that's awesome. But it's like, you know, lots of minutes about Lego. So I'd be pretty surprised if that been 
many people have listened to this podcast for that long. So at the beginning of today's episode, I'm actually going to tell you guys to find me online. You can follow me on Instagram. I hit 10,000 followers on Instagram a few weeks ago. Please go check out that page. I literally post daily content over there. You can follow me on Twitter. I recently made a new Twitter page for Lego Lee. You can like my Facebook page. Of course, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. All of this is Lego Lee 329. And if you really love me, if you really love this podcast and you really love my content, maybe consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Literally, you can donate $1 one dollar a month that will go a long way for me making more awesome content like brickology because i'm not really making a ton of money off this right now in fact i'm making pretty much no money besides the little money i currently make off patreon so that would be a huge help and i only have like five patreon supporters right now obviously i'm not a huge you know internet presence but it would be really cool to get more patreon supporters so if you really love my content please go check me out on patreon so the those are all my announcements. Sorry for like five minutes of announcements. I just had to get some things out of the way. But the future of Brickology is bright and today's episode is going to be bright as well. Let's jump into this week's theme. So if you didn't figure it out by the very simple intro I did to this week's episode, today we're gonna start off a new kind of mini series for Brickology and that is Lego Harry Potter. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised I haven't tackled anything Harry Potter. It took me 20 episodes to get to Harry Potter Potter, which is kind of surprising because it's, you know, one of my personal favorite Lego themes. Now, the reason I scheduled this episode to come out, well, it was supposed to come out last week at the beginning of July, but it's coming out this week instead. The reason I scheduled is because I initially thought that the new Lego Harry Potter sets were going to come out on July 1st, like they did the past two years. However, that's not going to happen because of COVID-19 and all the madness. Those sets have been delayed in America. A lot of people thought it was going to be August 1st, but currently they're kind of in this weird limbo state on lego.com where it literally just says coming soon. So we really have no clue when these sets will be coming out. I am hoping and praying for August 1st, so fingers crossed for that, but right now it might not even be August 1st, and it won't be July 1st, obviously, like the last couple of years, but I'm going to stick to my schedule anyways and go ahead and do my first Harry Potter episode, and like I just said, this is my first first Harry Potter episode. Like Star Wars, I'm going to break up each Harry Potter episode into different movies. So today will be about the first Harry Potter book slash movie sets, and I'll move forward in chronological order. And like Star Wars and Ninjago as well, there will be one Harry Potter episode a season for Brickology. So look forward to that. But of course, today, we're only going to start off with the first Harry Potter set from the first Harry Potter movie, which is based off the first Harry Potter book, and that is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Or if you're one of my UK listeners, that would be Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone for y'all. And speaking of the UK, this book was released in the UK first in the summer of 1997. Love that year. That is the year of my birth. The book was later released in the US in 1998. So the UK had it for a little bit over a year before the US got it, and I was barely even alive, but I was alive when this book came out. So I am older than the Harry Potter franchise, which is kind of funny to think about. And I'll kind of talk about the Harry Potter franchise and its effect on my life here in just a second. Now, of course, these were written by JK Rowling. And I believe there's some story, I don't know how true this is, but there's some story that JK Rowling wrote out chapters of this book on napkins in a bar. And she literally went from being like homeless to now she is literally a billionaire. So a true rags to riches story, which is obviously very inspiring and pretty crazy. But when you have an idea as good as Harry Potter, that's kind of what happens. Now, the popularity of this book obviously led to a movie adaptation, and it didn't take very long. I mean, the movie adaptation is technically, you know, made by Warner Brothers, an American studio. So America got the book in 1998. The film was released in 2001. So that's just three short years. So they had to do a lot of work to adapt this. And obviously all the Harry Potter books weren't even done being released at this time. There was still plenty of Harry Potter content yet to be 
released. So the first film comes out in 2001. It's directed by Christopher Columbus. No, not the explorer that sailed the ocean blue in 1492. The director, Christopher Columbus, who also did the movie Home Alone. So it was kind of a very, you know, kid oriented movie, but that makes sense because the main characters were supposed to be 11 years old in the film. And I saw this movie in theaters in 2001 and I kind of remember it I think I was like four years old at the time and I literally grew up with these films now people say that about anything I would say I quote-unquote grew up with Star Wars but I didn't obviously grow up with the release of Star Wars Star Wars came out in 1977 a full two decades before I was born I grew up watching those movies on VHS and then DVD but those movies came out before my time however Harry Potter and pretty much really only Harry Potter for very influential big movie series is a series that literally came out during my entire childhood. I saw every movie in theaters. I remember seeing the first one in theaters when I was four years old. The final movie came out in theaters when I was 14. So I was pretty much a kid for the entire run of Harry Potter. And as I got older, I got to watch Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, Emma Watson, all of these actors get older on screen before my eyes. And I am very thankful for that. That is a very cool thing that I was pretty much the perfect age to just be absolutely obsessed with Harry Potter as a kid. And I still love Harry Potter. My roommate hadn't seen all the Harry Potter movies, so he and I watched them like literally a month ago. I absolutely love this franchise. It means a ton to me. I also read the books when I was younger, which is kind of rare for me because I'm a super visual person. I just do not enjoy reading books, but I have read the Harry Potter books. So this is a very important franchise to me that I literally grew up with. And the first Harry Potter movie was a gigantic hit. I mean, that's not really a surprise because the book was a huge hit, but the movie was very good. It was very well received and it made almost a billion dollars worldwide in 2001 and of course when something is that popular and that huge that leads to a lot of merchandising this movie was heavenly heavenly no heavily <laughs> merchandised and Lego was one of the big contracts that Harry Potter and Warner Brothers scored. Now, at the time in 2001, Lego and licensed themes weren't quite like they were today. I've discussed this in my various episodes about Lego Star Wars, but back in the day, Lego relied way heavier on their unlicensed themes, and licensed themes were kind of an oddity. It's kind of been reversed now 20 years later, but Star Wars was one of the first big Lego licensed themes back in 1999, and I would say Harry Potter was Lego's second big license theme after Star Wars. Now, Star Wars was in its third year, so Star Wars had been around for a while. They had seen the success of a big movie franchise as license themes, and of course, Harry Potter was just starting, so Lego really capitalized on the opportunity to make Harry Potter sets, and they really just went all in with their first wave of sets based off the Sorcerer's Stone. Well, technically it's two waves, but the first two waves of Sorcerer's Stone saw 11 sets in 2001 and 2002. So they committed big time to Harry Potter right from the get-go. Now, Harry Potter has had a weird history where they made lots of sets for the first few movies, and the sets kind of dwindled out. They even canceled the theme, and then it got brought back, and then got canceled again, and then it got brought back again. It's very, very complicated what Lego has done with Harry Potter over the years, but ultimately, Harry Potter has been a big Lego theme for nearly 20 years. Next year in 2021 will be the two-decade anniversary of Lego Harry Potter and the Harry Potter films in general. And I think it's a good time to now bridge ourselves into talking about the sets based off the first movie, The Sorcerer's Stone. History lesson out of the way, let's start talking about the Sorcerer's Stone sets themselves. Now, according to my source brick set, they have made 17 total sets that are just based off the Sorcerer's Stone 
movie. However, there are some additional sets that are like kind of based off Sorcerer's Stone, but they're kind of an amalgamation of scenes from multiple Harry Potter movies. We'll talk about those sets at the end, but we'll focus heavily on the specific Sorcerer's Stone sets here first. So in 2001, right before the movie came out, we have the first wave of Sorcerer's Stone sets. And the first set we'll talk about is, you know, the first thing you do when you get to Hogwarts Castle, and that is get sorted into your house by the Sorting Hat. This set was simply called the Sorting Hat. It was $7, had 48 pieces, and it included Harry Potter. Now, this original Harry Potter figure had a light gray torso, he had a cape, and this Harry Potter minifigure had normal sized minifig legs. Later on in 2018, they gave Harry Potter from the first couple movies short legs to make him look more like a kid, but back in the day, Lego used just normal minifig legs for Harry Potter. This set also came with the owl piece in white to represent the owl headwig, and this is a very strange build. This was a a strange little platform that had a chair that was more of like a disc piece and you could put your minifigure on it and you could spin it around to sort them into their Hogwarts house. Now it was a pretty cool disc piece. It was printed and it had all the Hogwarts houses printed on it. And that's a good question for you guys. What is your Hogwarts house? If you're able to comment or email me or something, let me know. Personally, I am a Ravenclaw, but of course you can sort Harry into Gryffindor if you have other characters from other sets. You could sort them into their respective houses, and they even kind of remade this last year in 2019 with a similar build that came with a book. That was kind of a weird thing, I don't really count that as a set, but a very strange set that doesn't really quite fit in with anything else, but it has a fun little gimmicky play feature. Now, for $10 from this this first wave with 60 pieces we have the final challenge this is one a very spoiler heavy set to come in the first wave of Harry Potter sets now obviously if you had read the book you knew what was going to happen but if you hadn't read the book and you're just seeing the movies for what they were this is kind of a strange thing to make, and it's kind of odd to me LEGO released this in the first wave. If it came out in the second wave after, you know, the first wave of sets had already been released, it would have made a little bit more sense, but this is just straight up a spoiler-heavy set. This set included the figures of Harry Potter yet again, and then you had Professor Quirrell. P -p -p was studying P -p Professor Quirrell? And this Professor Quirrell minifigure is very important in the history of LEGO figures. This is the first figure to ever have a double-sided face. Being completely serious here, this figure, first one ever to have a double-sided face. And LEGO figures, pretty much all of them now, have double-sided faces, but this one obviously had double-sided face because in the movies, Professor Quirrell takes off his turban to reveal he's been hiding Lord Voldemort on the back of his head with some very odd looking 2001 CGI. So they printed Lord Voldemort on the back of Professor Quirrell's head, which of course is a pretty big spoiler as well. Now the build for this set was one small little chunk of Hogwarts, but speaking of Hogwarts, these Harry Potter sets were all modular. Like the new Hogwarts sets they're making in the modern day lines of Harry Potter that you can connect to one another, back then these Harry Potter sets were modular as well. And you could take apart the modular pieces and combine them to make a bigger castle and to expand your display, which is pretty cool. The room in particular included with this set didn't have a whole lot going on, but in the middle it had the mirror of Erised, which is a very cool thing from the movie. Of course, the mirror of Erised shows you what you most desire. So Harry, when he first looks into the mirror of Erised, he sees himself with his dead parents. Rest in peace to Harry. Harry's Lily and James Potter, Harry's parents, but the Mirror of Eris said it's very cool, and of course at the end of the movie, Dumbledore puts a spell on it, so when Harry looks in it, the Sorcerer's Stone appears in his pocket. And of course, this Mirror of Eris said had a cool little feature where it could open up to reveal the aforementioned Sorcerer's Stone, which was represented with just a normal red gem slash diamond piece, which honestly was a very good part choice because that's kind of what it looks like in the movies. It's a pretty underwhelming looking thing in the movies, but of course, if you 
don't know, the Sorcerer's Stone can create an elixir that makes you live forever as long as you keep drinking it. And a guy named Nicholas Flamel has been living for like 600 something odd years because he's been drinking this elixir from the Sorcerer's Stone. So this was a pretty cool, albeit very spoiler heavy, small $10 set. Next up for $20, we're kind of going in reverse order for the challenges. It's actually kind of odd. The final challenge from the climax of the film is the smallest set, and we're going in reverse order as we get bigger. But for $20, 175 pieces, we have the Room of the Winged Keys. So this set came with Harry Potter in our first appearance of Ron Weasley in this set. And this room came with the room with the winged keys or winged keys. How do you guys say that word? I've always liked saying winged, although I think winged probably sounds a little bit better, but shocker, it comes with the room of the winged keys, and it came with key pieces that had small wings attached to them, and you also had Harry on a broomstick to try and catch the key to open up the door to the next challenge, and it does actually have a small connecting door that goes to the next challenge, which of course is the big challenge that is Wizard's Chess. However, this representation of Wizard's Chess is ridiculously small. It's just, I believe, like a six by six square. Pretty underwhelming and small representation of Wizard's Chess, and it only has one piece that I believe is supposed to be the queen or the king. Kind of lame. I think LEGO should actually make a full Wizard's Chess set. I think that could be a really cool set. It also could double with just literally being a chessboard. I would love to see that from LEGO at some point in time, but as it stands, this is a pretty lame representation of Wizard's Chess. Also for $20 from this first wave of Harry Potter sets, we had the 163 piece set called Snape's Classroom. This set came with Ron Weasley, no Harry Potter, interestingly enough. It also came, of course, with Professor Snape. Now, the original Professor Snape Lego figure, for some reason, unbeknownst to me, for I literally can't explain this, had a glow-in-the-dark head. I mean, completely serious. His head was not normal Lego yellow flesh tone at the time. It was glow in the dark. This is so bizarre, so beyond me. I don't know whose weird decision this was at LEGO, but they also continued this for like three more years. But Snape's head in these initial Harry Potter waves was glow in the dark. This is just so strange to me. I can't even begin to explain that. Also a weird thing that's hard to explain is this set came with Peeves, the ghost. If you don't know who that character is, I don't blame you because he's only in the books. He's just, you know, a various specter around, you know, or a poltergeist that haunts, you know, Hogwarts Castle. He's not in the movies. He's only in the books. So very odd to me that he is included in the Lego set when he's not included in the movies. Very strange little note. And it's actually not the last time you'll hear his name in today's episode. The build of this set, though, is Snape's potion in classroom. It has cauldrons, potions, some print textbooks and of course it is an expandable piece of Hogwarts Castle like the last two sets we've talked about. And speaking of pieces of Hogwarts Castle, the next set we have is the Forbidden Corridor. This is a $30 set with 238 pieces. The figures included with this set here are the big three, Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, and our first appearance of Hermione Granger. And this one also came with an exclusive to this day, Fluffy, the three-headed dog, big animal piece. I love this piece. I still have this piece. It's a great piece and it's the only time they've ever made Fluffy in any Lego set. The build of this set has a staircase that leads up to the room with Fluffy that's of course on the forbidden third level of Hogwarts Castle. Fluffy, like he is in the movie, is standing over a trap door. Now they include a flute piece to make Fluffy fall asleep, although in the movie Professor Quirrell has already showed up there and put Fluffy to sleep with a harp. So that's a little bit in accurate, but it's just kind of a reference to the flute that Hagrid plays for Fluffy, or tells them that he 
you can play for Fluffy in the movie. Now, the flute piece was actually kind of a cool piece. It's a printed lightsaber blade. That's very rare and a very interesting piece included with this set. But Fluffy, of course, is standing over a trap door. If your figures fall into the trap door, they will go into the Devil's Snare just like they do in the movie. And it's actually a very cool mechanized play feature where a figure literally falls into a leaf piece and then it makes this like chain reaction of a mechanism where another leaf piece falls on top of it. A very creative and cool play feature, especially for the time that this set was released. And finally, there was a feature where Hermione was holding a transparent blue flame piece that I'm guessing is supposed to represent the spell Alohomora, where she makes the light appear that makes the devil's snare stop holding on to Ron because he can't relax and get let go by the plant. So that's pretty interesting. I also just messed up. It's not Alohomora. That's the spell that opens up locks. I can't remember the name of the spell. It may be Lumino. Yeah, it's Lumino is the spell that makes the light appear. Sorry, Harry Potter fans. I know my lore. I just had a slip of the tongue there. So that set completes the challenges from the climax of the movie, and the next set, which is also $30 with 299 pieces, is the first ever appearance of Hagrid's hut in Lego form. This set, of course, included Hagrid, who had a specialized big torso piece that is very, very cool. This is also our first appearance of Dumbledore in Lego figure form. This set also included Norbert, the small dragon, who was a specialized piece as well. The build of this set was, of course, Hagrid's hut, and it had a very interesting folding out play feature. The way they made the roof of this hut is they used these very strange plastic Plasticky paper pieces. They were a rather firm but thin plasticky paper, and they all kind of angled up to make it kind of like a teepee shape for the roof of Hagrid's hut. And all the walls were on hinges to give it the circular design, and you could unfold the entire thing. It's a pretty cool play feature to open up the hut. However, because of this, it means each wall is a very small individual piece, and when you open it up, there's really not that much interior space. So that is a bit disappointing, but it's still a cool and interesting design. This is the only time that we ever saw this sort of design for the roof of Hagrid's Hut. They have since, I believe, remade this set three times, and each time since they've tried different versions of having the roof be brick built, but this is the only time we ever saw this with a Harry Potter set. Now getting to some of the bigger sets from this first wave of Harry Potter stuff, back in 2001 we have the $50 410-piece Hogwarts Express. This set included the big three, but in their street clothes attire, and the build of course is the Hogwarts Express. You get the engine of the Hogwarts Express, and then you get one passenger car. It's missing a coal car. That's a very noticeable disclusion with this set. There is no, no coal car. So that is kind of weird, but you do get a build for platform nine and three quarters, which is pretty cool. Pretty self-explanatory, Hogwarts Express, it's iconic, it's a great set. They've remade this one a number of times as well. This is a great set. We can move on to the next one, which is the $90, 682-piece Hogwarts Castle set. Yes, the first ever Lego Harry Potter Hogwarts Castle. My brothers and I received this gift, I believe, for Christmas, maybe that year, in 2001 from one of our uncles. It was super, super cool to get this set. And I remember building it with my brothers. I was super young, but it was really hype to have this giant set back in the day. The figures included here, of course, the big three of Harry, Ron, and Hermione. We also got Draco Malfoy, our first appearance of him, Dumbledore, Snape, Hagrid, Peeves, yet again, and then we also got an exclusive figure of the Gryffindor Knight statue. Now, the build of this set is a big chunk of Hogwarts Castle. It's lots of various rooms for Hogwarts Castle. Most notably, it has the Great 
hall and the tall tower that's right next to the great hall and that's kind of the iconic look of Hogwarts castle there's that iconic moment in the film where it's nighttime they're on the boat and they're first approaching Hogwarts and the Harry Potter music starts playing it's super cool it looks great and you could recreate that sort of scene here because the small boat is also included with this set and like I've mentioned throughout this episode the other chunks of Hogwarts castle were modular and could be added on to this particular build which is very cool so that is a great set and I think probably the best set from the initial line of Lego Harry Potter sets now there are three more sets that were released for Lego Harry Potter in 2001 but these sets are very very strange and the reason for that is these sets were girl sets now, while I believe Lego is for literally anybody, anywhere, it doesn't matter what gender or age or whatever you are, Lego is for everyone, it's no stranger that I think Lego targets boys a little bit more. And then they have sets that are targeted towards girls specifically, like the line of Lego Friends. And Lego actually did that with Harry Potter. Now, it kind of makes sense because Harry Potter, I think, is a pretty gender-neutral franchise. In fact, I would probably be willing to bet that more females are into Harry Potter than males, at least from my experience with my personal friends in life. I know lots of girls who are just obsessed obsessed with Harry Potter. Now, I'm obsessed with Harry Potter too. Doesn't mean you can't be, but I do know Harry Potter and that sort of thing is really popular among girls and women. So it kind of makes sense they might make some Harry Potter sets targeted at girls, but at the same time, these sets are kind of whack and bizarre and did not last very long. So these three Harry Potter girl sets were very strange. The minifigures were still minifigures, thank God. They weren't like weird mini dolls or something. The first set is called Hogwarts Classroom. It was $10, it had 73 pieces, and the figure was Harry Potter, but this Harry Potter had a brighter blue cape because I guess that's more feminine, even though it's not accurate to the movie. Very strange. The build came with the Potions Classroom. It also came with a room with the Mirror of Erised, but the colors they used for the floors and the walls were oranges and blues instead of tans and grays much brighter pastel colors which is very strange but something we do see also in some more girl themed lego themes like friends for example also for ten dollars with 68 pieces we had the gryffindor house this came with ron but he had a colorful blue robe instead of a gray robe this had the fat lady portrait to let them into the gryffindor house and you also had a bed for ron that had a pretty cool cloth piece to cover up his bed but again way more colorful and pastel and speaking of colorful pastels we had a Diagon Alley set which is kind of weird because we didn't have a Diagon Alley set in the initial wave of Lego Harry Potter the only one to get was one of these more girl targeted sets and that is the $10 80 piece Diagon Alley shops which came with Herm Hermione in a very colorful sweater and the builds here were a colorful potion shop that had a lot of pink yes pink pieces and you also got a pet store that had some more colorful renditions of rats cats and owls for your aspiring witches and wizards to buy very weird really weird little pocket of lego harry potter sets that i don't think were super popular and just look very strange in hindsight and i really don't think lego needed to do that because i think if you like harry potter regardless of your gender you're gonna want to get the more accurate harry potter set so it's very odd they made these harry potter sets kind of like intentionally inaccurate in terms of colors just to appeal to a different gender but that's it for the lego harry potter and the sorcerer stone sets to come out in the year 2001. Now before we make a significant time jump, there were a few Sorcerer Stone sets released in 2002 of a small second wave. The first of those being the $4, yes just $4, 23-piece set called Flying Lesson. This included Harry Potter on a broom and included Draco Malfoy also on a broom. The build was a tiny supply cart with some Quidditch supplies and it also came with a transparent minifigure head that 
that's supposed to represent the remembrance that Neville Longbottom gets in the movie. When you hold it, if it lights up red, it means you forgot. It means you've forgotten something, but Neville cannot remember what he's forgotten. It's kind of a funny little thing, and Draco steals it around and starts throwing it around in the first scene involving riding on broomsticks and Quidditch in Harry Potter. For ten dollars with seventy-one pieces, a little cooler of a set is the set titled Troll on the Loose. This set came with Harry Potter, and it also came with the troll in the dungeon that Professor Coral so fittingly kind of announces to the Great Hall on Halloween. And this troll is one of the earlier instances of a Lego big fig. He uses a normal Lego minifigure head. He was in kind of a sandy blue color, and he had a very interesting cloth piece that kind of went over his arms and neck. And the build was a small build of the girl's back bathroom and there were some features to smash it up with the Trolls Club just like it happens in the film. Pretty cool small little set. For $30 from this second wave with 250 pieces was Gringotts Bank. This set included Harry Potter in his street clothes, you also got Hagrid, and you got two goblins. They weren't named in the set, but presumably one of the goblins is Griphook. And the build for this set is the inside of Gringotts Bank with that iconic kind of roller co coaster-esque cart design. And this set comes with a big representation of Harry Potter's vault that's full of all the gold coins, meaning Harry Potter is kind of rich in the wizarding world. And it also came with the smaller vault that has the Sorcerer's Stone, but it's a Sorcerer's Stone that's kind of wrapped up in paper and that was represented with a printed tile. That's it. That is it for all the original Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone sets that came out around the time the movie was originally released. And surprisingly, not counting small poly bags, there's actually only one more set that is specifically only based on scenes from the Sorcerer's Stone. Only one more set for the rest of LEGO Harry Potter's history, and that is the 2018 Quidditch match set. That set was $40, had a great piece count of 500 pieces, it included six figures, which is great for a $40 set. Those figures were Harry Potter, Hermione, Oliver Wood, Marcus Flint, Lucian Boyle, and Professor Snape. And the builds of this set is you got four different stand towers for each Hogwarts house to make the Quidditch Stadium. And each tower kind of had little different details for them. Snape was in the Slytherin Tower, and there was a cool kind of fire play feature represent the scene where Hermione lights Snape's robe on fire because they think Snape is cursing Harry's broomstick when in fact it was Professor Quirrell. That that's a cool play feature, and then Harry can bust through the Gryffindor Tower on his broomstick as a feature to kind of make the tent little section cloth of that flip, which is cool. However, that kind of means this set wasn't entirely based off of a scene from Sorcerer's Stone because, well, Harry bursts through those towers in a Quidditch match during the Chamber of Secrets. You also got a very cool build of the three Quidditch hoops, and there was a nice transparent stand for the goalie to block the Quidditch players from throwing in the quaffle through the hoops, which is pretty cool. And this set was the first appearance of the newest Golden Snitch piece. So those are all the specific sets based off Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. The next batch of sets I'm going to talk about are sets that have elements from the Sorcerer's Stone, but they kind of been combined with other moments from other Harry Potter films. Now, I don't have a lot of time here today. I don't want to make this episode too long. It's already been pretty long. This is one of my longer Brickology scripts I've ever written, so I'm not going to focus too much on these sets besides one in particular, which I will focus on heavily towards the end of the episode. But the aforementioned sets are the 2020 Quidditch Match, which was $20, the 2010 Hagrid's Hut remake, which was, uh, which was $40, and I was actually the first person to review this set on YouTube back in the day. We also had the 2010 Hogwarts Castle, the 2011 Diagon Alley, which was a direct-to-consumer set 
for $150. Speaking of director consumer sets, the 2018 Hogwarts Castle, which has over 6,000 pieces and was $400, has a lot of elements from the Sorcerer's Stone. And we also had the 2018 Hogwarts Great Hall set. I will talk about this set in particular for a couple of reasons. One, it's mostly a Sorcerer's Stone set. The reason it's not entirely is because it includes a build of the Basilisk. However, the Basilisk included with this set is absolute garbage. It's one of the worst builds I've ever seen. It's a complete throwaway build. I have no idea why LEGO felt the need to include it with this set. But the Basilisk, of course, is from the Chamber of Secrets and not the Sorcerer's Stone, making this not a specific Sorcerer's Stone set. But this set retails for $100, had 878 pieces. The figures it included were the big three. Now with short legs, you also got Draco Malfoy and Susan Bones. Those are all the characters in the movies that get the sorting hat and have their house read off. Susan Bones, of course, is sorted into Hufflepuff and she does pretty much nothing else for the rest of Harry Potter. Unfortunately, no Ravenclaws were represented in this set, which is kind of sad, or even in the movie. Ravenclaw needs some representation, man. Come on. It also came with a few professors. You got Dumbledore, McGonagall, and Coral, again, with a double-sided face, and you got Rubius Hagrid. The build of this set is kind of a remake of the original Hogwarts set, just a little bit toned down. It was the Great Hall and the Tower next to it to again recreate the iconic scene with the boats coming up to the Great Hall and it does come with the boats as well. You also got the Mirror of Erised in this set which was very cool and this Mirror of Erised actually had interchangeable pieces. There's a few extra mirror pieces so you could have the various scenes you see of the Mirror of Erised in the movie which is a really cool touch on Lego's part and the reason I'm focusing on this set is my Instagram fans voted this as the best Lego Harry Potter set based off the Sorcerer's Stone movie. I'm not really counting it entirely because it's not specifically only based off the Sorcerer's Stone, but since they didn't really know that rule I made for it, I understand why. It's a fantastic set. I'm literally looking at this set right now on a shelf that's like three yards away from me. I love this set. It's a great set and I don't blame anybody for voting this as the best set. Since it's not only based off Sorcerer's Stone. I think I had to give it to that original Hogwarts castle, which will be the thumbnail for this episode of Brickology, but that this is still a great set. And the one set from 2020 that is kind of a Sorcerer's Stone set as well is the latest four Privet Dry that hasn't even come out here in America. This is mostly based off the scenes from Chamber of Secrets, but it does have the letters coming through the chimney and through the door and the owls dropping off the various Hogwarts letters, which of course is an iconic moment from the Sorcerer's Stone. So that set also kind of counts as a Sorcerer's Stone set as well. And that is it, folks. Those are all the Lego Harry Potter and the Sorcerer slash Philosopher's Stone sets. What a great episode to do. I'm finally happy to be back in the swing of things with Brickology, and I'm super excited to make more Harry Potter episodes in the near future. Don't worry, more Harry Potter episodes will come and look out for the poll on my Instagram for the fan vote for next week's episode of Brickology this season finale for season two and like I said at the beginning find me online like my Facebook page follow me on Twitter follow me on Instagram follow me on all those pages subscribe to my YouTube channel and maybe consider becoming a Patreon supporter Everything helps, guys. And thank you so much for the unwavering support of this podcast. Streams are doing really well. Hopefully next week I hit a big milestone in streams. I won't spoil that yet, but hopefully next week I will. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Brickology. Stay safe out there. Be great. Keep building all the Lego you want. I have no idea how to conclude this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening. Peace out. Bye-bye.